What's up guys, welcome back to another Twin Motion video. In this video, we're going to look at Sketchfab. So I know this is with the latest update of Twin Motion, which was 2022.2. That was a little while back, but specifically with Sketchfab, I've seen some questions come in about uh, how you can use uh, specific pieces of the models because of how they come in and uh, basically the integration that Twin Motion has with Sketchfab compared to Sketchfab itself and what we're used to doing. So. Okay, before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. Really helps me out quite a lot. Okay, getting into it now. We're in just a basic twin motion model, nothing special here, because we're going to look specifically at the sketch fab. And so we can expand the menu here and see, yep, there's my sketch fab. So yeah, what is sketch fab? Well, really quickly, it is just a complete database, an online database with a bunch of community based models. They're all models that the community of Sketchfab has created, and it's all here for us to use within Twinmotion. This is fantastic because we can easily download them within Twinmotion, dump them into our model, override materials, and do whatever we want really quickly, which is really, really great. And so let's go ahead and do that. We'll do that really quickly, and then we'll move into um, a different example as far as splitting up models and things like that. So let's do um, maybe a couch. We probably want to look at a couch and then um let's say yeah really any of these cats but you can see how many there are here it's just it's awesome there, there's so many things that you can do here a ton of these different things you may not want to use because they're a little gamified but you know this is this is kind of cool it's a nice little setup so i'm going to go ahead and download this we can see a couple things i would pay attention to are uh, the size of the model and that this one you can clearly see is 7.1 megabytes that's that's not small but it's also not huge uh, we can come over here we can see hey look that single couch is 22.9, uh, 48, like th there's a ton here. So there's there's a lot to be aware of when it comes to things like that. And once it's downloaded, which I can see here, it is downloaded, I simply just drag it in. It's it's this easy. And this is really the appeal of Sketchfab. It has so many different things. Granted, a lot of them are gamified. They're really for games, but look at this, how awesome this is. So while we don't care so much about this, um, we might want to change some of the materials because I like it. Uh, maybe I want to change the color. Well, I can just simply check out any of these colors, uh, any of these materials, and I can change, override the color. That's really simple to do. Um, I can even just simply override the material itself. So we can come back out of here. Uh, we don't want to necessarily look for couches right now, but materials, uh, there's a ton of different materials. Obviously this is all here, but maybe we want to look more towards a fabric and really any of these fabrics would be fine as an example, because Again, I'm not really trying to make this beautiful, but uh, what might we see on a couch that make that might make sense or a chair? Uh, most of these don't, but let's say this gray kind of carpet fabric. Well, I can simply drag this and it will replace. Now, of course, it will replace both of those instances because it's on the same. It's the same material from the same model, everything. And then like this coffee table, well, I love the coffee table. Then maybe I want to change the wood. Now, I, in fact, kind of like the wood. But what if we want it to be just a different kind of wood? That's really simple to do. I can either edit the wood just like this. And you can see if I come into more, there's my actual like image file that's used with this, which is awesome. I could, if, I, if you want to start with that, you can go edit that in Photoshop, do something different. But what's more, what's easier is to come into Twinmotion and just pick anything here and just replace it. Look how easy that was. That was cool. So with this, of course, maybe I want to rotate this around and we can make all the types of edits that we can normally do with, um, you know, editing materials, applying them to objects in twin motion. That's all really easy. So, um, I want to draw your attention to what this looks like in our scene graph. Well, there's not much to it here and it is a single object and I, I'm kind of stuck with that. And so this is where the real meat of this video comes into play. Now, maybe, I decide, well, I love all of these things. I love all these models, but you know, I don't want to be stuck with this layout, this location of all of them. I want just the chair. Maybe you just want one piece of the furniture, or maybe you want to have all of them, or maybe you want the exact same setup you see here, but you want to be able to move them around specifically. So like I want the chair on the other side, or I want uh, the chair to be longer, bigger, you know, change them individually. Then that's where this video comes into play. So again, you can see I have my single object here. I do want to draw your attention down here to these statistics, change that to metadata, expand this, and you can see, you know, the author and the licensing, which we could also see uh, whenever I search in the Sketchfab. If I were to search again for couch, 
come back down to that couch, we can see that we will see the exact same data, which is really good to see because you want to be able to know if, if you need to know that information, that's where it is. So we can see, yep, there it is. There's a licensing, there's the uh, commercial licensing. Great. And then obviously Benji labs being the author. Cool. That's all great. Now, how would we go about splitting this up? Basically, maybe I want the pillow. I want to take the pillow off the couch. I want to get the pillow out of there. Well, what can we do? Well, I can hover over this here and I can see, look, there is a strategic looking button there and it is open in Sketchfab, which, woo, what does that do? Well, I'm going to have to bring in a browser over here and we can see, yeah, look at this. We bring this over here and we can clearly see, yep, this is the exact same model as it loads. This is the exact same model that we are working with into Emotion. Fantastic. Obviously we know what it is. We like it. Uh, we just want different pieces. Well, what do we have to do? Well, <laughs> It is as easy as downloading it from Sketchfab. And I'm not going to say I love to do this, but if you really want this couch, this really want the pillow off the chair, like anything like that, we just download the model. And of course, we're going to have to log in. I would very much recommend that you log in with your Epic Games account because you probably already have one. You're using Twin Motion. And the last thing I want to do personally is have to deal with going and making another and remembering another account and all that. So, yes. I have read this and I accept this. Cool. So I'm now logged in with my Epic Games account. Fantastic. I can come down here to download model. And we do have a few options here, which is nice to see. We have a bunch of different options. Um, that's cool. We also have the credits. If we want to credit the author, credit the creator, um, anything like that. But the available downloads here, I, I do want to draw your attention to this because a lot of these will work in Twinmotion. Um, there's a better option and there's a fine option. Well, uh, FBX, we know FBX can come in to Twinmotion really easily and we know we like that. But look at the size here. This is 65 megabytes. That's ridiculous. Um, as of Twinmotion 2022, we now have the option of importing uh, GITF, which is a converted format. And we can see more information about this specific format here. It is a, a one size fits all format, which is awesome. And it basically is a reduced file size version that allows for this consistent PPR physically based rendered materials workflow, which is exactly what Twinmotion is. That's what we want. If you're not using PBR materials or any sort of PBR workflow, I would look at your workflow uh, pretty intently because we do want to be using that. So that's cool. We have a ton of different options with that. We'll go ahead and close this. And so I would highly recommend uh, that we go and move towards this format. You can see it is six megabytes. That is ridiculous. And comparing to the, the 65 megabytes, that's crazy. If you remember within Twinmotion, for some reason, putting it all together within Twinmotion was over seven. So this is in a way saving some file size if you care. Now I don't, and we're kind of of the age that that doesn't matter so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this out and I'll meet you back in Twinmotion. All right, and we are back in Twin Motion. I can get rid of my scene for now. I can even get rid of my library for now because we're going to basically import another version of this, but it will be ours that we just downloaded from Sketchfab itself. So I can come to my import. Import. I want to import geometry, nothing beyond basic geometry. It's going to come in as geometry, and it's the type of thing that you're going to have to update and re-import if you find that you need to down the road. Of course, be sure to unzip the file because that's really important and we can find that it's in this folder here and there is my lovely scene and this is everything you can see i'm not going to bother letting this load but i'm going to go ahead and open this and we can see i do want to expand my options here because this is very important we can see our collapse you know i'm a huge proponent if you've seen any of my other videos on importing i am a huge proponent of not collapsing by material but simply keeping the hierarchy and what is the hierarchy going to do what is the hierarchy in this case well because i have three or in this case five different objects and there's really more than that if you count individual pillows and books and things like that there's a lot of objects we're going to have individual control over all those objects which is exactly the whole point of this entire video you want to keep the hierarchy everything else i would keep the exact same i wouldn't bother with it and then i click import and yeah, this is the type of thing where do you want to use the same material? Do I want to keep both? I don't care. I haven't really applied materials. I don't care that much. Um, just know that you're going to have to edit that. So uh, something to be aware about is that you can see it way up here to the right. It's going to end up in the middle of your scene or whatever it is. So it just happens to be like right there. Um, so I'm going to come over here, expand my library. Oh, look at this. Look, there's a ton here. And this is uh, debatably a mess. And this is what I don't like about it. But 
we need flexibility and this is going to give us the flexibility we need. We can see here that uh, the file itself is called scene or the folder that I imported uh, from the file itself is called scene. So that's why that this folder is called scene. So I can, I can just collapse this and it's one whole file and I can just move this here and move it over. And so we, we know what this looks like. We have seen this before. It looks very familiar to us. Um, except now we have a lot more flexibility with it. So you might look besides the materials that I replaced, it looks very much the same and like, yeah, it does. Um, except we have more control. So I'm going to expand this scene and this in the library, you can see all of the, th like everything here, which is kind of absurd, but uh, forgetting the scene itself, I can come over here and just select a book. That's awesome. I can move this book. I can put it anywhere I want. I don't necessarily want to do that, but I can change this plant. I can rotate it. I, you can see the control that I have. Maybe what I want to do is select all of these objects here that are involved with the table itself. Maybe I want to select all the objects that go with this table. And I just want to move the whole table. Look at this. You can see the amount of flexibility control I have with this. We could even go as far as just hiding them. Maybe I don't want to see it. I can delete it if I want. You know, there's a ton of things here, this whole lamp. Maybe I want the, the lamp rotated. Maybe I want it moved somewhere else. Like you get the idea. Same with the pillows. I, I might want it rotated. I might want it somewhere else. You know, like <laughs> there's a ton of things here. I can, I can put it down here on the floor. Like there's a lot of things I can do. So that is the real power of Sketchfab. Not only do we have the ease and usability of it being here and be able to search and see everything and given the size and just dump it in, but what comes with that territory is knowing that it's going to come in as one object and I will have to deal with it as one object. Whereas now, obviously if I were to update any of these materials, if I take the material I put over here, um, right there, and maybe we want to take this wood and put this, put it on this, make this more or less a, a wood plant. I can replace that there and just know it's going to replace that one too, because it's the same material. So, uh, the great thing about this is that I do have the flexibility to bring it in as one giant object. Totally fine with that. But if I really need to, I can go and download the file itself and import that specifically. And then I have full control over every single element in the, to in all of the model, which is fantastic. So, uh, obviously use it for what you need to, for example, if I were to download this, which is just a series of odd looking semi futuristic sci-fi chairs, that's cool, but I don't want them displayed in a row. Like I would have to go to Sketchfab and say, okay, well, I definitely want this one chair, this, these two or three. And so that's the type of thing. So the nice thing about this too, of course, is if I decide, well, I actually only want this couch. I can just simply copy this. I can even just hide this here and then just paste it. I just, and I'll actually copy cause I don't want it tied to any other element. And then I can make that visible. And then now I have my own sofa. That's just the single sofa. That's all it is. If I want to take this a step further, I can always, of course, right click this and I can add this to my user library. And so that will show up on, in my library and I can come all the way down to user library and it will show up here and I can just easily drag it in. So if I add this to user library, boom, it's just a single chair or a single couch and I can put it in just like that. So yeah, it comes in sideways. We can deal with that later. Not a huge deal, but we have full control over what it actually is. And I can literally isolate the models that I need to get them away from everything else in the whole set. Cause I don't need it and then move on. So like, I love this couch and probably have to use it for multiple projects because I do like it that much. And it's a great placeholder couch, that type of thing, real easy. So that will do it for this video. We looked at everything Sketchfab because we have so much that we can use. There's so many more downloads. It, it, it's insane. And so you could get lost in it. And I'd recommend that you do to understand what you have access to now. But not only that, we looked at how we can take, the regular imports from Sketchfab and Twinmotion that come in as single objects and just simply download them from Sketchfab itself and have more control over individual objects, of course, with the materials, of course, but with individual objects, making them, taking little pieces out and just manipulating the models to another level. So I definitely hope you learned something. If you did, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out quite a lot. Also consider subscribing. That does as well. Be sure to stick around for more Twinmotion videos coming out pretty soon because Guess what? Autodesk and Epic Games have partnered up. I, if you haven't checked out that video I've done a couple weeks ago, check that out because it's going to be really helpful and get an idea of what to expect for the future. Now, we don't really know what this partnership will look like, but it's going to help quite a bit. And so definitely learn to emotion. I can 
happy to help you with that. I have tons of videos on Twin Motion, so check those out for sure. But I'm excited for that. So I'll see you in the next Twin Motion video. Have a wonderful day, and thank you very much for watching.